Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. With Pat McSherry. All right, what a fish. And Andy Bioka. Wow. Get the colors on this fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holst. Before we get into the fishing portion of today's show, I want to talk about some things that have transpired in the ice fishing community. Uh, to put it bluntly, uh, we've all had a pretty tough week, uh, least of which has to do with the ice conditions. Um, last week when we were filming our show, uh, it became apparent to the production crew and I that ice conditions were getting pretty bad and the weather forecast uh, was looking uh, even worse. Uh, we decided to pull the plug on our f filming for the week uh, last Monday and air a recap show that talked about uh, early ice techniques from seasons past. Now, when we aired that show, we had our fingers crossed that things wouldn't get as bad as they ended up being. And unfortunately, there was a tragedy in Northern Minnesota this last week where we lost a couple young ice anglers. And uh, from all of us here at In-Depth Outdoors, we can't even imagine the pain their families are feeling. So I think about the only thing we can do uh, is talk about ice safety before we get into the fishing part of today's show. Uh, if only to play a tiny part in making sure something like this doesn't happen again. So when we're out there on the ice, uh, we are very cautious as we proceed. And there's three things that I do every time I'm on the ice, early and late, um, all season long, to make sure that I adhere to the idea that no ice is ever safe. So when you see me out there in these shows, you have to notice that uh, I've got a spud bar with me at almost all times. Uh, that's what I use to check ice safety because you cannot tell the thickness of the ice with your eyes. Uh, I've used the same spud bar now for probably almost a decade. And I know if I hit the ice twice and I don't get through, I've got four plus inches. If I hit it once and I draw just a little bit of water, I've got three inches. One hit and I bring up a lot of water, I need to walk back following the path I came in on because I dare not go any farther. So that tool alone, uh, I would say on average, keeps me from walking out onto uh, dangerous ice a couple times a winter. Um, it keeps me from ever getting in a situation uh, where I'm gonna need rescue. Uh, the next thing I carry with me at all times is a set of spikes. Uh, you've probably seen these hanging around my neck um, in some of the early ice episodes and not even knowing what they were. And what they are is a very inexpensive self-extraction device. Uh, you pull it apart, there's some spikes on the end. If you end up in the water, you can use these to pull yourself out. Early ice, there's no snow on the edge of the ice. It's very slippery, it's gonna be wet. You're probably not gonna be able to pull yourself out without a, spare, a pair of spikes. And then finally, um, all of the guys I fish with on the production crew and the anglers that I'm out there on the ice with, we're wearing a flotation suit. And if you're not familiar with those, um, we're fishing with uh, striker ice gear. Um, if you go in the water, they're basically uh, a built-in flotation device. Uh, even if I'm wearing just the bibs, there's enough flotation in that garment to make sure that I never go underwater and I'm not exerting energy to keep myself above water that's needed to get myself back out onto the ice. Now, some people will say I need to bring ropes and buckets, but really I'm focused on getting myself out of the ice without the help of anyone else because we've all heard of um, good intention rescuers coming out to help people and they end up in the, in the water as well. So these three items, those three ideas, I feel very comfortable making sure that I'm never in a situation I can't get myself out of. So on today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, in an attempt to find reasonably safe ice, we head to the upper peninsula of Michigan where we're gonna fish with Justin Sofa uh, out of Ironwood. And what's great about this area is they have not been experiencing the warmer temps that the rest of the ice belt has seen over the last week and a half. Uh, if you look at the scenery shots, you notice that the woods 
fairly full of snow. Uh, what that means is the ice conditions are a lot more stable. And what we're going to do here today is we're going to be targeting a panfish bite, primarily crappies in a shallow lake uh, with the fish relating to cribs. And I love fishing this type of structure. They're man-made, and once you find them, it really concentrates the fish. So stick around. It's Justin, Sofa, and I up near Ironwood, Michigan, chasing crappies here today on In-Depth Outdoors. Back home today, and temperatures are forecast to hit 60 degrees in Minneapolis, St. Paul. That's the reason we're here. Um, things are going to get a little dicey in central Minnesota, at least for a few days, as we get some of this really warm weather to go through. So that's why I'm up here to see my buddy Justin. They just have not had the warm temperatures like we've had back in Minnesota. Of course, you can look at the top of the lake here and see that. They have had some warmer temperatures. They don't have any snow on the lakes. If you look up into the shorelines up on the hills, you can see they've got uh, a little snow back in the, in the woods, something we don't have any of back home. It was a bit of a drive, but it seemed like a safe bet because there's about, I don't know, <laughs> hundreds of lakes like this one in this general area. So tungsten fly, a couple of spikes. This lake is a panfish lake. There are some big walleyes in it, but we won't be targeting those today. But uh, nice bluegills and crappies. How many you got on the ice, Justin? None yet. None yet. Got him. What you got? I don't know, it feels nice. First fish of the day, man. What you got? Nice crappie. Sweet. Fantastic way to start the day. Well, you got the dollar for the first fish. Can't do anything about that now. <laughs> you drilled the hole. You picked a good spot. Nothing wrong with her. Goodbye, fish. And there she goes. Right on top of the crib, huh? Yep, right on top. Well, I know those cribs aren't big enough for the crib to extend out over this far. There's there's a few that are close, right? In... Kind of a pile of them? Yep. You get that one on that little slab wrap? No, this is on the tungsten tubby. Gotcha. Oh, that's right, you went traditionalist. I forgot. Yep. Got oh, Justin's in the timber. Not sure what we got going on with this one. Said shaking. Another crappie. There he is. Not a giant. Ah, you're but... killing your average. Yep, not a giant, but we'll take it. I'm gonna make some holes closer to what we think is a crib. Thank you. I fished these back in. Uh, Western Wisconsin before, and just a move of like two or three feet, you just want to you want to get on the corners. Yep. If you can get on the corners, you get fish running from both sides, and they kind of turn the corner, or they they run down the side, and they kind of turn around and then come back. Yep, get right on that point. You can it's see worth all, the effort. All of the all the green bars were in here, and I had my jig sitting just above it, and all of a sudden the bar turned red, and it came up. Boop, 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 boop. I, or do they do they uh, stuff these uh, cribs full of smaller branches and stuff? Uh, it's, I haven't sent have the camera on them just, just gotcha. with the flasher. So gotcha. I know I've seen kind of both ways, some that are yep. kind of clean, just the planks on all sides, and other ones where they've just stuffed it full of yep. you know, smaller branches. Yep. Strike Master introduces the new Lithium 40 Volt. Everything you've ever wanted in an ice auger. With a 40% increase in cutting speed over the competition and up to 100 holes per charge, the Lithium 40 Volt has the power and stamina you need to hunt down your next big bite. And for a limited time, all Lithium 40 Volt augers come with a spare battery, free. The new Lithium 40 Volt, only from Strike Master.
From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, Ice Fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods. Ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip-up fishing. Look at that. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Got a fish down in the crib here that's kind of being mean to me. I mean, it bumps around a little bit and oh, it's really nice. and then here he is. Eat it. And there he is. There you go. What's it going to be? I'm guessing crappie. And I'm right. Another crappie. Not as big as your first one. Nope, but we will take him. They're liking this orange stunks and tubby right now. Well, you did say that they do like the bright stuff. Yep. Thank you. I was thinking about uh, running down a slab wrap or a, a little ripping wrap, but <laughs> fishing it down in amongst those timbers might not be the best idea. Yeah. Here's a good fish. There we go. Ooh, the rod bend. <laughs> oh yeah, big crappie. Perfect. I might have uh, reclaimed the bar. You got me on numbers for sure, but that is a nice crappie right there. Well, I know they get bigger, so you'll probably raise it yet again a couple times on me. I'll do my best. All right. Did you raise the bar on me? I might have. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I hope we play leapfrog uh, like this all day long. Firing that one back. I've got one more waiting down there for me. I love this. Another nice crappie. Those are what we live for right there. Yes, sir. If we can catch them like this all day. I'm not nothing. going home. <laughs> <laughs> we have ice. Thank you for playing. Go tell your friends. So in this hole, I'm actually right over the top of the crib. And I've got a really good view here of how many layers uh, of logs are actually stacked up. I can count them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And of course they stack like Lincoln logs. So there's air space, there's gaps as they, you know, they'll put a log down this way, one like this, another one like this. So there'll be air pockets where the fish can swim in and out. And you can actually see those on your flasher. Uh, of course, when you're right on top of the crib like that, particularly if there's brush inside it, uh, it can be pretty hard to distinguish fish from bait, you know, the bait that you're fishing. So uh, I've always done best right alongside the edge where I'm only able to just glimpse just one side of the crib and primarily what I'm seeing on my sonar is just clear water. So I'm gonna move and see if I can't get back more towards the edge. Of course, Justin's got the uh, knack over there in that hole. He's right on top of his crib and he's catching fish doing it. Okay, now this is what I like right here. I'm right on the edge. I can't see all those layers of the, the wood and I can actually swing my transducer when I just give it a little kick and that transducer swings out in that direction right towards the hole I just came from. I can see a lot more of the crib. So this is where I wanna be. Of course, that transducer swing is helpful in a lot of different ways when you're looking to see what's around the hole. Very effective when you're crib fishing. Sure beats having to punch another hole. Got it. Boy, that's getting to be a pretty light bite, bud. Yes. Light bite from some heavy fish. Come on. Ho, 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 I'm the king of the pumpkin seeds. <laughs> pretty guys. All right. Another really nice pumpkin seed, not as big as the uh, Big one I had about an hour ago, but I had just broke off that there chartreuse, there he goes, tungsten fly, reloaded with a hot pink and fish don't care. Of course that pink is a real good panfish color. Let that guy go. What you got? What Mine's going you? down, yours is coming up. I got something flying, another one. Look at that. Back to back bluegills. 
That was good to go, a bite mark on him. These are definitely adult fish. There's a good one. I was just gonna say, it seems like you can't get too many out of any one Whoa. hole, and he hasn't moved in the last hour. I don't know what I got here. Are you back reeling? James? Yes, I sir? Think, I think we raised the bar. All right. I gotta come be the final judge on that, right? We will take fish like this all day long and as long as they are willing. Oh yeah, easily. <laughs> that's, a, that's a 14 plus inch crappie. I concede, <laughs> but I will not give up. <laughs> I hope you raise the bar again. Shuttle only from Markham Technologies. Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. Both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic flow rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. Proving yet again that the best never rest, Otter introduces Otter Thermal Tech, the proprietary full thermal shell found on every Otter shelter, beginning with the all-new XTH hub shelters and the all-new lightweight one-man XT hideout, on up to the ever-popular XT and XT Pro Series shelters that have earned a near-legendary reputation for unmatched toughness and durability. At Otter, we know stopping at good enough is way overrated. This ice season, see for yourself how the best just keep getting better. Now, it didn't take very long, 10 minutes, two guys working together. And uh, this is definitely gonna be uh, a real stacked up crib here. Comes up to you know, less than nine feet of water. Got a lot of sticks on top of it and you can see the edge over here. Hopefully there's some fresh fish on top of it. She's all yours, boss. There we go. Feels like a good one. It feels better. There was some weirdness involved there. I was fishing the guy in the bottom and all of a sudden one come in about two feet above. Pulled up to him and lo and behold, I hooked up to him. Oh ho ho ho. Yes sir. This is what we want right there. Big old slab pies. It's so windy, you gotta make sure your gloves don't blow away on you. That one there. I've been working a mark on the bottom for a long time. He just would not commit. And then this guy came up above my jig and above his buddy on the bottom. When I raised up to him, he woofed it right down. And what we're hoping is we're gonna see a whole slug of fish like this as we start to get into that you know, twilight period. Middle of the day has been pretty tough. Fish here or fish there, but overall pretty tough. All right, nice healthy thick fish. Back he goes. I want more of those. And really my mainstay today has been tungsten fly, three different colors, but primarily it's been chartreuse in this hot pink tipped with three or four spikes. All right. I like seeing that high flyer, that fishing up, up off the bottom like that. They're just usually so much more aggressive. 
Both Justin and I are fishing uh, bull whips, tuned up custom rod with a three pound Suffolk Ice Magic. He's fishing clear. I've got some high vis. Um, I don't think it really matters much in water with a little bit of stain like we have here. And then we're both fishing the uh, Okuma Seamar 10, which is a great little panfish reel. Got him. Another one about two feet off the bottom. I think you're onto something. Well, they make it pretty easy. Oh, come on up here. Nice slab. There we go. This is starting to come together, folks. That midday lull, we're looking at that afternoon peak feeding window right now. They're all dandies. They're coming in about two feet off the bottom. Pretty easy to convince those fish to eat. Fire that one back. See you later, fish. I'm off the edge of this uh, crib. This is the one we found sort of uh, later in the day. I'm gonna call it the new crib, but it's just one that we hadn't located earlier in the day. And I'm off the uh, deep edge of this crib. In fact, one end of the crib is up in 11 foot of water and I'm off the edge here in 14. So I'm assuming what's happening is as these fish start to get active, they're working the deeper edge here. Those last two fish have come in about 11 or 12 feet down in 14 feet of water. And there's been no doubt about what they're going to do to the jig. They basically show up and just smoke it. It's amazing how fast fish can change their mood, their attitude. Two hours ago, you'd mark those fish and you could do everything you could possibly think of and they wouldn't give it a second look. And now you almost can't do anything wrong. <laughs> Sounds like a bit. So what you're saying is they're back on the original crib. Yep. This is a fighter here. Whoa, another giant. We will take fish like this. Good. Any grief. day of the week. What another beauty. I'm not sure if this beats my last one, but it is awfully close. At some point, they're all just awesome. And that is a beautiful fish. All right, thank you. See if we can get some more. Strikemaster introduces the new Lithium 40 Volt. Everything you've ever wanted in an ice auger. With a 40% increase in cutting speed over the competition and up to 100 holes per charge, the Lithium 40 Volt has the power and stamina you need to hunt down your next big bite. And for a limited time, all Lithium 40 Volt augers come with a spare battery, free. The new Lithium 40 Volt, only from Strikemaster. Markham's new pocket-sized handheld underwater cameras, the Recon 5 and 5 Plus, use a 5-inch color display to deliver superior screen detail and employ a combination of dark water LED and infrared lighting to punch through the darkness. The Recon 5 Plus adds a built-in DVR and on-screen display for critical information, previously only available on full-sized underwater viewing systems. This winter, see what you've been missing with a Recon from Markham Technologies, the undisputed leader in underwater cameras. I think he's super big. Came in really high though. There you go. You can eat a crappie. Most places here, kind of short on one end. All right, I'll fire you back. Not going to spend a lot of time messing around. Not right now. This is kind of our window. I'm sure they're just starting to come back into the cribs now. Got him. Oh, the deucer's coming out. Yeah, he's not that big. He just wrapped himself up in it early. I'm your fish. Hoo -hoo -hoo. I like catching pumpkin seeds when they're like that. 
and bigger. Not the biggest one we've had today by any, whoops, sorry buddy. Not the biggest one we've had today by any means, but getting to be about that time of day. I caught a really big one this morning, about this light level, and I'm sure now as we kind of start to lose light again, these bigger bluegills pumpkin seeds start to get active. There he goes. Didn't even get my hands too wet. I'm convinced. You're convinced you're gonna go to do the uh, tungsten fly? Going with the fly. I think another thing that's making a difference is I'm staying off the edges of the uh, the cribs instead of being right in them. I know there was a time period this morning where you kicked my fanny because you were in the crib. I kind of see them more of them on the outside now. Got him. Oh, come on, old fish. Oh, here he is. Nice crappie. Oh, wait till you see this side. That is uh, some pike burn. This guy's day went from bad to worse in a hurry. I would imagine a big old pike got a hold of him or whatever the top of the line predator is. He's gonna need some uh, time on the bench to heal from that one. I'm gonna fire him back and see if I can't get another one. Got him. Good one. <laughs> Didn't feel terrible. I don't know why he ever leaves that spot. Is that Jaken? Feels like a good one. Look at that sunset, man. Ooh, is that Jaken? There he comes. Nice crappie. Atta boy. Oh, and this one has also got a chunk removed from him. I think bad things happen around here after dark. It's looking that way. He didn't fight like he was wounded. He has seen some bad times, and hopefully things get better for him. So we'll put him back, and hopefully he can keep on doing his thing. And there he goes. So that brings us to the end of today's show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. A special thanks goes out to Justin Sofa. Absolutely love fishing with the guy, and I promise all the viewers that are interested in more information about the UP, we will be back to this area in the very near future. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In-Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.